Most people think 2030 is far away. That illusion is the most dangerous thing about it because the next four years will decide who stays relevant, who gets left behind and who never recovers at all. We've entered the vertical part of the exponential curve where history stops moving in years and starts moving in months and most people won't realize it until it's too late. By the time it feels obvious, the decisions will already be made not just by companies, but by governments. AI systems quietly replacing workers. The urge to manage the climate. Longer lifespan turning into a paid upgrade. And it always starts the same way. With a tool so small, so familiar, that nobody questions it anymore. For the last 15 years, we have all been slaves to the same master that glowing black rectangle in your pocket. We look down at it 200 times a day. We experience the internet through a piece of glass, but by 2030, that era ends. We are currently witnessing the death of the screen as we know it. The biggest tech giants, Apple, Meta, Google, are no longer betting their future on smartphones. They are betting on the invisible interface. The move from looking at technology to looking through it. By 2030, high-fidelity augmented reality won't be a bulky headset you wear in your living room. It will be lightweight, indistinguishable from normal glasses, and powered by 6G networks that are 100 times faster than what we have today. We are moving toward a digital world, a complete merger of the physical and digital. You won't need to pull out a phone to check Google Maps. The directions will be painted onto the street in front of you. You won't zoom into a meeting on a laptop. Your colleague's hologram will sit in the empty chair across from you. But hardware is only half the story. The software is where this gets terrifying. In 2025, we were impressed by AI chatbots that could write poems. By 2030, those chatbots will look like pocket calculators compared to what is coming autonomous AI agents. These aren't bots you chat with. These are bots that act for you. An agent that controls your bank account, negotiates your bills, books your travel and filters your news. And this leads to the most dangerous shift of all. The dead internet. Experts predict that by 2030, over 90% of online content will be generated by AI. The articles you read, the comments you see, the videos you watch, the vast majority will be synthetic. When you combine hyper-realistic AR with an internet flooded by AI, we lose the ability to verify what is real. Reality becomes editable. Truth becomes a luxury product. We aren't just losing our phones. We might be losing our shared reality. If Chapter 1 was about changing your reality, Chapter 2 is about changing you. For all of human history, aging has been a one-way street. You are born, you age, you die. It was the only absolute rule of biology. But in 2030, we are going to break that rule. We are currently approaching a theoretical tipping point called longevity escape velocity. The concept is simple but mind-bending. It is the moment when science can extend your life by more than one year for every year that you are alive. If you can just hang on until the early 2030s, you might hit the point where death becomes optional. This isn't science fiction anymore. In 2025, we watched labs use chemical cocktails to reverse the age of human cells in less than a week. We saw AI models predict protein structures in seconds, work that used to take humans a decade. And this brings us to the three technologies that will define your health in 2030. First, Senolytics. Think of these as antivirus software for your body. As you age, your body builds up zombie cells that stop working but refuse to die. They inflame everything around them. By 2030, you won't just take vitamins, you will take a senolytic course to flush these cells out, literally reversing your biological clock. Second, CRISPR 2.0. We are moving from treating diseases to editing them out. In 2025, gene therapy was for rare diseases. 
by 2030, it will be for prevention. Imagine getting a vaccine, not for the flu, but for heart disease or high cholesterol, permanently editing your risk factors to zero. Third, the digital twin. By 2030, you won't visit a doctor when you feel sick. You will have a constant AI simulation of your body running in the cloud. It will predict a tumor years before it forms and 3D print the exact drug needed to kill it, customized just for your DNA. But here is the dark side that nobody wants to talk about. These treatments initially cost millions. In the late 2020s, age reversal will likely be a luxury product. We are heading toward a world where the rich won't just be wealthier than you, they will be biologically younger than you. The inequality gap is about to become a biological gap. So the question for 2030 isn't can we live forever, it is who gets to live forever? If you think the AI revolution is moving fast, you haven't looked at the climate data from the last 12 months. For decades, scientists warned us about the 1.5 degree safety limit. They said it was a line we shouldn't cross. Well, I have bad news. We are crashing through it right now. As of late 2025, reports confirm there is now an 86% chance we will breach that 1.5 degree threshold before 2030. We aren't just flirting with the danger zone. We are moving in. And this triggers what experts call the domino effect. In October 2025, we officially passed the first major tipping point, the widespread collapse of warm water coral reefs. But that is just the first domino. The next one is the Amazon rainforest. New data shows that deforestation and warming are pushing the Amazon toward a dieback scenario where it stops producing rain and starts turning into a savanna. If that happens, it doesn't just hurt Brazil, it changes weather patterns in Iowa, London and Shanghai. So, what happens before 2030? Desperation. When governments realize they can't cut emissions fast enough, they will turn to the Hail Mary of technology, geoengineering. Right now, in 2025, research projects are already funded to model solar radiation management, literally spraying particles into the stratosphere to block the sun. By 2030, we likely won't just be debating this, we might be doing it. Imagine a world where the weather isn't natural, but managed by a government department. A world where we hack the atmosphere to buy us more time. We are entering the era of the artificial earth. We broke the climate, and now, for better or worse, we have to engineer our way out of it. For 50 years, space was a museum. We went to the moon, took some rocks, planted a flag, and left. It was about prestige, but the next four years aren't about flags, they are about assets. We are witnessing the birth of the space economy, a sector predicted to hit $1 trillion by 2030. And the engine driving this isn't NASA, it is Starship. By late 2025, launch costs have already plummeted. But as Starship begins regular orbital flights in 2026, the cost to put a kilogram into space will drop to a point where heavy industry becomes profitable in orbit. This changes everything. We aren't just sending astronauts, we are sending miners. This triggers the lunar land grab. NASA's Artemis program aims to put humans back on the lunar south pole, with Artemis 3 targeting a landing as early as 2027. But they aren't alone. China has accelerated its timeline, aiming to construct a basic lunar research station by 2030. Why the rush? Because the lunar south pole has water ice, and in space, water isn't just for drinking, it's rocket fuel. Whoever controls the water controls the gas station for the rest of the solar system. But the real Wild West story is Mars. SpaceX is currently targeting the late 2026 transfer window to send the first fleet of uncrewed starships to the Red Planet. If those ships land successfully, the rumored SpaceX IPO could happen shortly after, 
potentially valuing the company at over $2 trillion by 2030. While Earth fights over borders and resources, a separate economy is being built above our heads. We are watching the separation of humanity into two species, the terrestrial majority fighting for 1.5 degrees of climate stability and a spacefaring elite building a backup drive for civilization. Is Mars a new home for humanity or is it just a lifeboat for the shareholders? If you look at a map today, you see borders, but by 2030, those borders won't matter as much as the biology inside them. We are entering the era of the demographic divide. For the last century, the West and later China dominated the world because they had the workers to build it. But that engine is running out of fuel. By 2030, the old world will literally be old. Japan is projected to lose nearly 20% of its workforce in the coming decades. Europe is shrinking. Even China, the world's factory, has peaked. Its population is now in decline, and by 2030, it will have a massive shortage of young workers. They are running out of humans. This forces a new kind of arms race, not for nuclear weapons, but for digital workers. This is why you see such a desperate push for humanoid robots and AI agents in 2025. It isn't just about efficiency, it's about survival. Countries like Germany and Japan must automate to keep their lights on. But while the North turns to robots, the South is rising. By 2030, India is projected to overtake both Japan and Germany to become the world's third largest economy. The global South, nations like India, Indonesia and Nigeria will hold the majority of the world's young workforce. This shifts the center of gravity. For 50 years, the G7 nations wrote the rules of the global economy. By 2030, three of the top four economies in the world could be from the global south. So, here is the reality check for the next four years. The east and west are aging. The south is growing. The countries that win 2030 won't necessarily be the ones with the most missiles. They will be the ones that can either build the best robots to replace their vanishing workers or the ones that actually have the workers. Demographics is destiny and the map is being redrawn right now. So, let's zoom out. If you take all these pieces, the AI agents, the longevity breakthroughs, the climate deadlines, the Mars missions and the global power shifts, you realize something terrifying but also exciting. We are living through the great filter. The world of 2030 won't just be a sequel to 2025, it will be a reboot. The screen is dissolving, biology is becoming software, the Earth is running a fever, and the geopolitical map is being redrawn by whoever runs out of humans last. It is a lot to process, and it's easy to feel small when you look at a wave this big. But here is the truth. The future isn't something that happens to you. It is something you build. The people who win the next four years won't be the ones who just watched this video and got scared. They will be the ones who realized that when the rules of the game change, you have to change how you play.